Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have some Happy Mail inspiration using one of the newly released stamp sets from Mama Elephant called Hot Air Balloon, which is incredible. Um, today I'm going to do some watercoloring. It has been a while and so I decided to do that. Um, for this card I'm using some really cheap watercolor paper. It's from Water Art. It's literally watercolor paper from Water Art. Um, <laughs> It is paper that handles quite a lot of water. Now for my technique that I'm doing here, um, Stratmore Bristol Smooth for example, is a really good paper as well. I don't use a lot of water and sometimes uh, it's even easier on a Bristol Smooth. Uh, so next time I will try to not forget to use that kind of paper so that you can see that as well. Um, but yeah. Whenever I'm doing watercoloring, I most of the time do no line coloring. And I don't have a lot of watercolors, so I use actually distress inks. And therefore, to have a no line coloring version, when I'm already planning to use distress inks as my ink for watercoloring, I also tend to stamp out my images using antique linen distress ink, which is a really, really soft colored distress ink. There are also other soft distress inks that you can definitely use if you don't have this one. Just go for a really soft, soft color. And then you sort of get this image. Now I have my paintbrush, it's a really cheap one, it's a number zero. But personally I find that you really need to search for one where you find that you have control. Um, this is a small image and I also have a, a zero two, which, uh, well... Uh, a zero slash two so it's half of the size of this one uh, but I don't have enough of control even though it's a smaller one so therefore I use a zero and in tiny spaces I will have more difficulties because I have a bigger brush but for me it's all about control so I, I definitely cannot recommend specifically for this image you need to use that or that I personally find search for a pen uh, a paintbrush that gives you control. So my technique or what I do um, is I go with barely a damp paintbrush to well in the ink and I lift up the ink from the acrylic block where I smoosh the distress inks on top and I add that there where I want to have the shadows. Then I clean up my brush I make it damp so I clean it I put it on top of a paper towel so that it can soak up the excess water and then I drag all of the color that I just added on top of my image, I drag that towards the rest of the space that I need to add that color to. Um, and I just keep adding layers. Something that I would recommend if you love this and you want to use this technique is to wait in between the layers you are adding to let it dry and then you have again more control over that ink and you can spread it wherever you want it to be. So that's personally what I do. Now um, this is something that I repeat all the time and it has become the way I love watercoloring. I also don't mind it to be a bit more uh, splodgy. Um, I find that it gives some sort of um, a rustic feel, uh, maybe an older kind of vibe. You will see that later on on the hot air balloon it will not be completely smooth because I don't want it to be um, and otherwise I think there are other techniques that will get you that smooth result. There is also a technique where you do wet on wet that you first add a bit of water then add the ink it will spread already a bit na more natural and so but I really want that control I want a bit of a splotchy feel at the end um, a bit rustic. So here I'm also just building up. Uh, this is definitely not the end of the purple where I just added them. But as I said, I personally find uh, giving it time to rest your paper again, to dry up and then come back in with ink like I'm doing right now, it helps to get the result that I prefer. So I'm just building it all up. I'm always adding the ink as well on that same area where I want it to be darker and then I'm dragging it out towards the rest of the image. Now there are a few details here uh, like the strings that are connecting the basket and the balloon itself. Um, there are ways to add it later on 
um, I am going to use my paintbrush, the same one I'm using here to color it in and I really took my time. Um, I had kind of the idea that today I had quite a sturdy hand so I wasn't afraid to do that. Um, sometimes I am afraid to do that and I just choose a really fine uh, multi-liner for example. Um, something that can handle water in case it's still wet um, and you can do it ahead of time or later on if you use something that is waterproof. Something that can help in this case in this image is that the lines actually later on are also straight so if you are not confident you take a ruler, you take your, your pen and you just use that ruler to, to guide you. They go perfectly straight so that's really handy to know as well I think. So I'm just building my way through this image um, I forgot how much details these images hold and actually that it took me quite a while but in the end it's all worth it I think um, I will definitely also use um, a stamp set uh, out of this set with my Copic markers of course uh, but I just realized that it has been a while and I did some watercoloring so therefore I'm just catching up with that because it's also a technique that I really really love doing and if you're like me and you don't have watercolors but you have some distress inks um, that's a really cheap way to give yourself some inks uh, to start watercoloring with and maybe you realize by doing that with a cheap ink uh, that it's something that you actually prefer doing and then you can always buy some more watercolor inks if you want to. So I think that's a great way to learn uh, and to, to see what you like doing. Because sometimes there are some expensive supplies and once you bought them you actually do need to use them just because they were so expensive and it's not always your thing. So this is a way to test it out. So here I am darkening in that hot air balloon again. I'm still adding in that ink that I'm taking from the acrylic block with barely any water. I'm still adding that at the same areas that I did before as you can see. I'm not switching that. Um, and it's just layer on top of layer and you can keep adding uh, depending on how well your paper of course can keep handling the water and the layers um, you can keep adding at a certain point you will have to say to yourself that you added enough and that you're happy with the end result of course um, but you just keep going until you're happy so I'm just adding the ink creating a clean damp paintbrush and dragging that ink around in the same area as I need it to be until I'm happy. So, the Mama Elephant release. Did you have some favorites? Did you also got this stamp set specifically? Because I knew the moment that I first saw, I think they it was a sneak peek on their uh, story actually, so they didn't share it in their feed. And now Mama Elephant is in front of my stories that I'm following because I just was blown away the moment that I saw this amazing stamp set and also the other ones. I love the fact the the, the agenda stamps. Um, I fell in love with them in the beginning and lately I haven't been buying all of them because I just don't get to creating enough of cards with them unfortunately. But they are always spot on and now with the bus and then the airplanes where you can just mix and match them, it's genius. There is a lot of use out of the stamps and I, I love Mama Elephant for that. I love that there is this kind of um, same stamp idea that is just used in so many different ways and I think they are genius for that. Uh, I just got this one um, also due to budget, budgeting, it's really important, it's really hard. Um, <laughs> but I'm really glad that I got this one uh, at least. Um, but it's so adorable, it's so adorable. And this bear, I mean, this stamp set can be used for so many things. I went for a neutral card kind of, I made a Happy Meal card, I'm using Hello later on as sentiment. But you can use that card for just a Happy Meal. You just send it to someone that isn't expecting it and they will smile because of your card. Um, or you can you can give it as a baby card, as in Hello Baby, or in Hello You, or you can make it a birthday card even, depending on what you're writing in the center of the card. And I just love, love, love this stem set. Also, imagining, um, well, since I'm working now, I 
I'm working now the third year, so I'm, I'm quite young, uh, but I still have quite a few of colleagues that are maybe going to change jobs and so this truly is kind of a new adventure kind of stem set as well so if you know someone or someone who is going to retire I think new adventures are going to await them and that way I think you can use this stem set for so many occasions for birthday as well because isn't this like a really fun stem set you can use one image, you can use two, three images, you can make a slim line, a mini slim line, you know. Sky is the limit. I love saying that with a hot air balloon stamp set. Sky is the limit, not even the limit, because you just keep writing. Uh, I think it's amazing. And I must admit, I think I have a soft spot for hot air balloon kind of stamps. I also have one from my favorite things, with the bear in it. Um, and it was actually my first stamp set for my favorite things that got me convinced again about my favorite things and they're amazing illustrators as well um, so yeah hot air balloons they are fantastic um, and I just love how this bear for example is looking downwards but it's like curiously looking um, I also decided to here add the um, details like the eye and the nose Using these stress inks, again, you can use a black uh, pen or even a dark brown pen if you want to. There are a lot of possibilities. So whenever you want to evolve to a next step and you don't know for sure that everything dried around, just use your heat gun or let it set aside. But I know once you get going, you just want to continue, you know? I have that, I don't have the patience to let things dry just by air. I'm just too impatient and I know that for myself. Here I just decided to add in those details just using my, uh, pen, well, my paintbrush again. If it's a bit too harsh you can always go over it like I'm doing here where I have those lighter areas. Just going over it with a damp paintbrush. Uh, it will still be present, but less. And then I decided to do those strings by hand, uh, which I really took my time for. This is sped up, you know. Um, and I first started by these strings that weren't overlapping the balloon. Uh, but really make sure once you get going on these elements that everything is dry. So use your heat gun, even if you think it's dry, maybe just to be sure use that heat gun uh, because you don't want to have your browns now leaking into the purple. Once I added the strings I actually found that on some areas the purple wasn't hard enough and so that was a bit of a, a struggle because um, you will see it in a few seconds. I also needed to add some purple there where the brown was overlapping and I didn't want it to smudge so I really took my time to not go on top of the brown area of that string. Um, really, really careful. But I'm glad that I did, you know. You can add as much as la layers as you want or need to, as I said. And previously I thought it was enough, but adding those dark brown strings just made me think that the purple wasn't dark enough on some areas. So I just added them. It's all about... Well, you look and you look again and you just think by yourself if you like it or not. So I stamped this image quite randomly on top of this big piece of paper because I had no clue what I was going to make with it. And then I just took my basic rectangles and decided to, to use scripty word. It goes really well with these images. It's really elegant as well. Um, and then I thought, well, this might be fun, just having my image on the side and then just have this large word. So I went with that. I also took um, eggplant cardstock from Concord and Ninth. It's the dark purple that I used actually in the image, sort of. Um, and I'm going to die get the hello out of that as well as my big rectangle for behind my smaller panel. Next, I'm adding that hello on top of the panel with my image and then I saw that and I think it sort of works but I wasn't sure completely 
and I was thinking do I have some embellishments to add on top of this panel and I did not have anything that really matched with the colors that I used so I just stepped away from it I continued with my card to be sure if I needed to add something or not I have did this creative sheets it's 3d foam creative sheets from scrapbook adhesives I bought it to test it I like it but there are of course cheaper ways to create your um, foam panels with adhesive um, and then I thought well maybe I just need a few hearts hearts are always the solution um, it's like iridescent things um, but I, I needed something that that linked to the other colors so I just took these hearts from the mammoth love there are several sizes and I just scattered them a bit and then once I was happy with placement I also stamped them out using that same antique linen distress ink to do some more watercoloring normally I would recommend to do this ahead of adhering and such but I just wasn't sure where I was going with this card with embellishments or adding things or not so I postponed I postponed and so I'm just adding that later on but again I am not coloring or water coloring with a lot of water so I think that also helps um, to a eventually maybe add something later on as well so I'm just adding here and then I will use that same darker purple I didn't clean up my acrylic block yet so I'm using that same darker purple uh, dusty Concord, if I'm not wrong, um, to add some color to these hearts. And I'm also trying to keep that shadow on the left side as I did for the other image. But as you can see, even by adding these three hearts, I'm really embracing the wide area, don't you think? And it's okay. It is clean and simple. And it's okay. But if you're confident, you can also add a bit of a watercolor background to this card. I'm just not as comfortable with that as, as you might be. Uh, it's the same with copy coloring. I try to do some backgrounds, but I'm still in the beginning phase. I'm not as comfortable. So I'm keeping that to a limited amount of times that I'm doing that just just to keep having the fun and not always go outside of your comfort zone. Another thing is also that you can ink blend. You can die cut this image and then ink blend the background and add it on top of that background. Uh, but whenever I am doing watercoloring, the line watercoloring, I love having it on a one layered card kind of thing. So that's why I didn't die cut anything and kept it like this. And that is my card for today. Really, really simple. No line coloring, of course, with water, well, distressing, so water coloring. I hope that you enjoyed it, that I could inspire you in any way. And um, I want to thank you all for stopping by and taking the time. I truly appreciate it. I'll be back soon with some new craft inspiration. Bye!